it makes it easier, easier to bear. You won't regret it, no, no. Following the Rockets' heartbreaking loss to the Trailblazers, the summer of 2014 saw the team retool the roster as they traded away Jeremy Lin and Omar Asik as they entered the poison pill year of their backloaded contracts. In trading away Asik, Houston reacquired Trevor Ariza who had been playing in New Orleans and Washington. They also traded for veteran guard, Jason Terry, a player who Rockets fans most closely associated with I-45 rivals, the Dallas Mavericks. Terry had spent eight seasons with Dallas and was part of their championship team in 2011. The first title in franchise history. The San Antonio Spurs entered the 14-15 season as defending champions. Everyone calls the Spurs a dynasty, but dynasty itself means successive. You have to win successive championships to be a dynasty. The San Antonio Spurs are NBA champions once again. Their fourth title in nine years. Yeah! Well, Dynasty has a meaning because it's about ruling and successive rulers as kings to become a dynasty. You can use other words, but you can't use dynasty because of the word itself. Despite winning the Larry O'Brien Trophy multiple times since 1999, the Spurs have never been able to win back-to-back -back championships. The Houston Rocket front office was unable to land their big target that summer as Chris Bosh resigned with the Miami Heat after their cap space opened up following LeBron's decision to return to Cleveland. Kevin, the Rockets thought they had him. They traded Jeremy Lin away just for the chance to have enough money to go get him. But Daryl Morey, the Rockets GM, told me recently the Rockets thought they were 95 plus percent on the way to assembling what might be the best team in the league. Because don't forget, if they get Bosch, they're going to keep Chandler Parsons. They're not going to let him go to Dallas. Now you have a big four. So Bob, Miami in the end steps up, throws that five year max offer well past the hundred million needle. Bosch decides to stay and now Houston has to regroup. The Rockets started the season strong, winning six straight and nine of their first ten. He tried to go for a big four. He tried to sign Chris Bosh, was going to match the offer to Chandler Parsons, and then they were going to have Dwight Howard and James Harden in a big four. They whiffed on Chris Bosh. He overplayed his hand, and Parsons left for the Mavericks. And so now he's left with the heart of his team built around two guys that are a little bit difficult. Dwight, a lot difficult. Uh, very unreliable, and, and Harden, who's a bit immature and doesn't like to play defense. You know, in chess, you're trying to checkmate the king. In basketball, we're trying to win a championship, so it's very clear that you need to take steps. Often, often you're, if you're trying to checkmate the king, you don't go directly barreling you know, towards it. You have to do some subtle things, uh, use a lot of discipline, and set up your strategy, set up your plays, set up your position to put yourself in position to win. Donatas Motiayunas continued to improve and worked his way into Houston's starting lineup. I invented sweat, popping bottles, putting supermodels in the cab. Proof. I guess I got my swagger back. Truth. New watch alert. New blows. Or the big face rolly, I got two of those. Arm out the window through the city, I maneuver slow. Cut back, snap back, see my cut through the holes. The team looked good heading into Christmas, but this didn't stop Daryl Morey being active in the trade market. On December 19th, he acquired Corey Brewer via trade and on Boxing Day, signed Josh Smith. Yeah, but let me tell you something, this to me is in a very important time for the Rockets. This is Josh Smith's time, because you watch the Rockets play. James Harden's taking entirely too many shots. He's a one-man band. If they're going to be any good when Dwight comes back, this is the time they got to integrate 
Josh Smith into the offense. He's got to get 10 to 15 shots because he's the second best player on the team right now, uh, other than Trevor Reese. Photo shoot fresh, looking like wealth. I'm about to call a paparazzi on myself. Uh, live from the Mercer, run up on Yeezy the wrong way, I might murk it. Flee in the G450, I might surface. Political refugee asylum can be purchased. Uh, everything's for sale, got five passports, I'm never going Stolen by Hart. Look at all the white jerseys. Who's he going to pick out? Well, go ahead and shoot. Oh! A three-point play the Hart In February, Maury traded for Italian point guard Pablo Prigioni. At 38 years old, he was in just his third year in the NBA after a decorated career in Europe. The acquisition proved essential as starting point guard, Patrick Beverly, once again suffered a season-ending injury after playing in just 56 games and Prigioni's veteran experience was leaned upon more heavily than intended. Dwight Howard would also be plagued by injury through the season as a problematic herniated disc in his back limited him to just 41 games. Oh! <laughs> Did you get that on Bills? Why you want that? Put that on NBA. Put that on NBA.com. Offenses across the league were placing more value on spacing the floor and shooting a higher volume of three-pointers. At the forefront of this movement were the Houston Rockets and Golden State Warriors. Welcome to Havana, smoking Cubanos with Castro and Cabanas. Via Mexico, Cubano, Dominicano, all the plugs that I know. Driving Benzes, with no benefits, not bad, huh? For some immigrants, build your fences, we digging tunnels. Can't you see we getting money up under you? Two years earlier, during Harden's first season in Houston, the team tied the NBA single game record for three pointers made by a team against Golden State. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Oh! Donatus! Moneyunas! Ties the NBA record! Draymond Green's foul on Beverly signaled the Warriors' refusal to allow Houston to set the record against them that night. In 2015, the Rockets set a new record for three-pointers made by a team in a single season, finishing with 933. Daryl Morey, a pioneer in the use of analytics, had been advocating for the team to strive to shoot as many high percentage shots as possible, which he identified as threes, free throws, dunks and layups. What did you think were the big inefficiencies when you took over that quickly got closed? I You'd mean, shooting three-pointers was, I mean, that one, uh, that one's still coming, but like that was such an easy inefficiency and, and now everyone's catching up. That was simple one. making Ricky Rubio fall to the ground. You know, I'd say, like, obviously the inefficiency of, you know, paint, you know, paint shots outside of the paint, not threes. People had figured out that the mid-range uh, jump shot was a very bad shot. What we found out is it's an even worse shot than people thought before because mid-range shots are the worst kind of shot to try and get back. I mean, it's virtually, it's very hard to get that back as an offensive team, so. I have a feeling Daryl wasn't very kind of you describing Houston as a bad defensive team. In fact, you said worst in the league defensive team. <laughs> Are the teams that's going to make the playoffs? They're awful defensively. But they're, but they're, if you look at the metrics on the thing, they're like number five in the league defensively. Just because you got good stats doesn't mean you're a good team defensively. They're not a good defensive team. They gave up 118 points. No good team gives up 118 points. I'm not worried about Daryl Moore. He's one of those idiots who believe in analytics. He went out and got James Harden and got Dwight Howard. They're going to tell me that's analytics. Then he went out and got Trevor Ariza. But uh, then he went out and got Josh Smith. So, first of all, I've always believed analytics was crap. And, I'm, and I, you know I never mentioned the Rockets as a legitimate contender because they're not. Uh, and listen, I wouldn't know Daryl Moore if he walked in this room right now. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how you feel about Daryl Moore's comments. Come on, man. <laughs> and that was very vitriol of you to say. The Rockets sucked for a long time. So they went out and paid uh, James Harden a lot of money. They got better. Then they went out and got Dwight Howard. They got better. They had Chandler Parsons. And no, this year they went out and got Ariza. The NBA is about talent. All these guys who run these organizations who talk about analytics, they have one thing in common. They are a bunch of guys who ain't never played the game, and they never got the girls in high school, and they just want to get <laughs> the game. 
I always heard like people were like, "All right, enough of this, Daryl Morey. We we've yeah. had it." I mean, they're right. There should you know. I, so should, would you I, have should, I, back? I should shut up more. I mean, that's just true. I you just, don't say you've been better lately. No, but my personality, as I'm, I think my, yeah, I think I'd talk too much, but you know. Daryl Morey, general manager of the Houston Rockets, down in the Rio Grande Valley for tonight's Rio Grande Valley Vipers Reno Bighorn matchup. Mr. Morey, what do you think of this team so far that you've, uh, you guys have assembled? The three point experiment that Daryl Morey began in Rio Grande Valley had proved successful. The Vipers averaged 45 three-pointers a game in 2014, almost half of the total shot attempts, and it was translating to winning basketball. Those are just just stats. Uh, and first of all, <laughs> stats, that, that, are, stats are analytics. <laughs> well, it has really nothing to do with analytics. Uh, it, it, I told you, I told you. Is it, analytics, analytics are like when you're black and See, white. Please. Like when you're black, they call you a cook. When you're white, they call you a chef. They just call it analytics, they can charge you more for it. They're just stats. Can't you see the private just flying over you? Maybach bumper stickery, what we're over do? Jay is chilling, yay is chilling. What more can I say? We killing them. By the end of the season, James Harden had established himself as one of the best players in the league and finished second in the voting for the Most Valuable Player Award. We haven't clicked yet. That's the scary part. You, know, you see all these other teams that are clicking, going 10, 15 game win streak. We haven't done that yet. The sky's the limit for us. Good. Here you go. Keep good cut. Good cut. From week to week, you just bounce all over in the West. I haven't looked at the standings in weeks just because it makes no difference because things change so quickly. Our goal is to be playing our best basketball in the month of April and then carrying that through for as long as we can make a playoff run. The Rockets opened the postseason against in-state rivals, the Dallas Mavericks. Chandler Parsons had left Houston for Dallas in free agency over the summer after signing a three-year, $46 million contract but was not available for most of the series after picking up an injury in the opening game. The Rockets started the series strong with a victory in Game 1 and in Game 2, Mavs point guard, Rajon Rondo, appeared to quit on his team and wouldn't appear again in the series. Tyson also added 11 points. He played well late in the season. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, that's terrible. That's tough. An eight-second backcourt violation. Wow. Those are just those are just too tough to give away. The wide-open three. And it's hit by Jason Terry. And he and Harden really going after it somewhere. Right now. Okay. Ten seconds into the third quarter is his third foul of the game. And Harden and Rondo got a little bit tied Double up technical. afterwards. We all know that the fact that Rondo's only played ten minutes of the game is clearly going to dominate a lot of the post-game talk. And you foul him when he comes up on the pick and roll. It's not away from the play. There's the Howard screen. Harden's got it. Clock at seven. Chandler switches on him. Here is James Harden. In and out oh. again. And a timeout, Dallas. Oh. 42 for James Harden. Now you're talking about a big time shot. Houston made quick work of the dysfunctional Mavericks, moving on to the second round after five games. Up ahead to Harden. Harden on the drive. And the long rebound to the Greyhound. Here he comes. Over to Josh. Josh will fire up a quick three. Bash it in. Oh, baby. Hold up before we end this campaign. As you can see, we have embodied the damn lambs. Lord, please let them accept the things they can't change. And pray that all of their pain be champagne. Harden will fire a three. That's off the mark. And oh, a hell of a job. Rock 
Rockets trying to score. Frigioni takes it in, lays it up and in. Seconds. Frigioni on the drive gets it out to Jones. Jones puts it in Terrence Jones with a cold blooded three. Back to Harden. Harden steps back, fires a three. Four points, one and two, 42 points in game three.